Dear church, let's talk about addiction and recovery. Hello and welcome to the Dear Church Podcast. I'm your host, Chris McCurley, my special guest, special friend, <laughs> Kevin Turberville. Kevin, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, sir. Yeah, I want to let our audience know who exactly you are. You're one of my friends here at the Walnut Street Church. You work at TriStar Bank here in town, mm-hmm. but you have a really good story that I want to, uh, I want our folks to hear. Uh, <laughs> before we jump into that, just tell us a little bit more about yourself. Uh, glad to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, I'm really glad that you're here. Um, yeah, I, uh, I grew up in Northwest Tennessee, <clears throat> middle of nowhere. Um, most people were teachers, farmers, insurance salesmen, some <laughs> combination of the three, <laughs> uh, Grew up in a grew up in the church. Uh, grew up, uh, mom and dad there the whole time. Um, we were there every time the doors were open. Congregation of about thirty people. Yeah. So you know, if, if any, no one ever missed because if you were out, everyone knew it. So uh, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, younger sister, uh, a couple years younger than I am. Um, graduated from Dresden High School and went to college at. Freed Hardeman University, got a bachelor's in youth ministry, uh, worked at Freed for a little while, did ministry for a little while, and we'll get into all that later. Yeah, 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 and let's do get into that if you're all right with it. I mean, you know, feel free to edit it as much as you feel like you mm-hmm. need to, or tell us as much as you want. Yeah. Uh, I think the big, um, the biggest reason I wanted to have you on here is because of your heart because uh, you are a success story. And I think that uh, folks that may be struggling with addiction and uh, trying uh, their best to get to a good place um, need to hear how things worked out for you and how you've gotten to where you are today. So if you would back us up and tell us about the addiction part and the difficulties and, and all that, and then we'll get to the good ending here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, it's, it's funny you use uh, the word edit yeah um, because uh, I got married last May Mm -hmm. and uh, I asked her uh, about this um, because um, I'm I'm personally uh, I'm just the, the type of guy to just like say, spill it all, spill right? every single bit of it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but uh, I asked her, you know, what what she was comfortable with. You know, th- there's a difference between me talking to Chris and me talking to. Yeah. And um, she said that uh, she said that she thought that uh, I would do a, a disservice um, to those. Um, in a situation like this, um, to not, you know, tell exactly how I got here. Um, whenever we were talking about it, um, it made me think of whenever Paul is rattling off, you know, his qualifications for his qualifications for, for being a sinner and being a saint. Yeah. Give it his resume. Right. Right. And, uh, you know, he just, he came out and, and said that, you know, he was, he, was persecuting the church with everything he had. Mm -hmm. And, um, I know that he wasn't proud to say that. And so I just want to preface all this by saying, I'm, I'm not proud to, I'm not proud to have this story. Uh, I am proud of what God has done, uh, with my story. Uh, and in, in spite of my best efforts, uh, to derail his plan. Mm -hmm. Um, Good way to put it. Right. And, you know, you're a Bible class teacher here. And what I love about your Bible class teaching is you're so it it sounds like a negative. You're unrefined. But that's what (laughs) that's what makes you so good is that you, you know, you just you come from the heart. And uh, but we love your wife, Kristen, and her and my wife have gotten to be good friends. And she just cracks me up watching her while you're teaching because she's over there kind of what's he going to say? What's But we love it, you know. And I'm glad that she gave you the go ahead because yeah. uh, I would understand if there were some things that you wanted to filter. But 
I, I do think that it's important because yours is one that uh, I think will resonate with a lot of people. So without further ado, go ahead, please. So, <clears throat> um, like I said, I grew up um, in uh, the, at that service every time the doors were open, um, Bible camp, uh, Bible bowl. Sure. Um, I, honest to goodness, uh, I do not remember my age when I was baptized, uh, but I know that it was either uh, eight, nine, or ten. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was early, early. And um, <clears throat> everything was going along fine uh, until I got a driver's license mm. and got some freedom and uh, I just felt, uh, uh, ultimately started to feel like I just didn't get to do what I wanted to do. Yeah. And, I I made, uh, I made a mess, uh, in high school, you know, um, just doing the things that there are to do in a small town, uh, with nothing to do. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, left, uh, I left home um, about halfway through my senior year of high school and went and lived with a buddy in town so I could do what I wanted to do and all that stuff and uh, eventually came came crawling back home. Uh, the prodigal came home. <laughs> yeah, right before. Basically because I was running out of options, which is why any um, addict gets help. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what was your, what was your, um, was it alcohol mainly, uh, in, at that time in high school? I'm, it started, uh, it started with alcohol, but, uh, I graduated to smoking weed and, um, man, the first time that happened, I was like, I just, this is, I want to feel like this all the time. All the time. Yeah. And then, um, whenever I moved out and, my senior year and that summer, you know, I was just, uh, I found my way into just about everything except for sticking a needle in my arm. Yeah. And, you know, probably the only reason that never happened is because, you know, we're just a bunch of country bumpkins. Didn't no know access. Any, yeah, yeah. Didn't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, had I grown up in a bigger spot, you know, that kind of thing, it could have turned out differently. Sure. But, um, yeah. So, Crawled back home. My parents were gracious enough to allow me to uh, to head off to Free Hardeman. Mm -hmm. uh, got down there, and um, I, uh, I I just picked up right where I left off at home, just in a different setting. Yeah. Um, you know, um, you can find whatever you're looking for. Doesn't matter if you're in church, freed. Um, yeah. uh, you know, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Um, I made it to midterms. Uh, I did not know that whoever pays the bill, uh, gets the, uh, gets the grades, gets the grades. <laughs> and my parents got my grades. And, uh, I also didn't know that, um, my Bible class teacher, um, that, first semester was the man that performed their wedding ceremony. Your parents' wedding. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. And okay. he had been a uh he had been the preacher at a congregation my mom had grown grown up going to. And so they were in constant communication uh with uh Coach Sharp, uh Roy Sharp, uh about how Kevin's doing. And Coach Sharp it was just like, I don't know how Kevin's doing. I haven't seen him. So <laughs> not a good sign. Not a good sign. <laughs> so mom and dad came down there and snatched me up out of school and said, we're not paying for this. And so I went home the rest of that semester. I worked, um, I worked all the year 2000. Uh, I, and I, I grew up on a farm. I grew up working hard. Um, that's that year of 2000. Uh, I went back to the farm, pouring concrete, loaded tires at a at a Goodyear plant, uh, stacked bricks at a brick factory, and um, you know had some hiccups along the way. But ultimately, I just I was like, if if 
if I'm not going to do these things for my career for the rest of my life, then something has got to give here. Now, were you all along still engaging in the behaviors that you had been doing? Uh, to, to some extent, but I mean, one, it, they kind of faded away once all my, you know, all my buddies had gone off to college. Every, yeah. Everybody's in college except for Kevin. Yeah. Who's sitting at home working at a brick factory. Right. Which is zero fun, sir. So <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine <laughs> that's hard labor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I knew a bunch of people uh, from fr at Free that I had gone to church camp with. And, you know, we were kind of in contact the whole time. And so okay. I'm just missing out all the way around. Right. You know, I had pursued what I, I had gone after what I thought I wanted to get you know, for fear of missing out on, on the good life. And then, you know, consequences of my actions led me to the spot where I was missing out on the good life. And, you know, didn't matter how I tried to, how I tried to break it down. Right. Whenever I was doing what Kevin wanted to do, I was missing out on everything everybody else was getting to do. Right. And so I settled down, went back to Freed, uh, straightened up and flew right through college, um, got a degree, very involved in the, uh, the, the social scene at Freed and, mm -hmm. you know, clubs, organizations, you know, all those things. Um, and my senior year, uh, the director of the admissions office asked me if I wanted to come work for admissions once I graduated. So, uh, I did that. A lot better than Brick Factory. A lot better than Brick Factory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. So, um, yeah, I worked in the admissions office for three years. I got engaged okay. at the time. And um, we'll dive into that later. Um, but that was a mess. And we, I broke off the engagement. Okay. Didn't want to be around. Uh, she was still in school. Didn't want to be around there, you know, and I had this degree and I was like, well, you know, let's put the degree to use. Okay. So, um, I got hired on at the Christian student center at the university of North Alabama. Okay. Uh, so did campus ministry for UNA, uh, college minister at Wood Avenue church of Christ in Florence, Alabama. Mm -hmm. Um, Got down there, felt real alone, you know, okay. didn't know anyone. I, uh, <clears throat> um, and, you know, since Kevin doesn't like feeling bad for very long, uh, <laughs> I, uh, uh, I rekindled that, that flame, uh, with the girl that I was engaged to and we ended up getting married Okay, and she moved down there. And, um, we just, we just did not do one another any favors yeah. at all. Just very selfish, self-centered. Um, yeah, it was just, it was a mess. And, um, once we got married, uh, being part-time at UNA, part-time at Wood Avenue wasn't, paying the bills. Mm -hmm. So I got a full-time job as the youth minister at the Rogersville Church of Christ in Rogersville, Alabama. Okay. And, uh, was the youth minister there for six years and, um, great congregation, great people. Uh, the minister there is still one of my best friends on this planet. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was instrumental in uh, me getting help. <clears throat> um, but, uh, along the way, uh, so I get into youth ministry and, um, I'm just, I'm going to be the best at it. You know, mm -hmm. like, um, we, we are going to, you know, I had, I had all these youth ministry idols, you know, this guy and this couple and these places and this, you know, this, that, and the other. And, <clears throat> uh, I put an incredible, uh, amount of pressure on an, an already high pressure situation with my wife, uh, you know, that we were going to be, uh, youth ministry rock stars. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, just the way I handled that, uh, 
the way I handled that coupled with, um, coupled with, uh, we were both drinking. We both kind of started to do, you know, uh, kind of the party scene a little bit, you know, away from Rogersville. Mm -hmm. Um, I had struggled with, um, I had struggled with pornography ever since I, ever since the, the internet was invented. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so from day one, from huh? day one. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like there's this theme of you trying to live two different lives. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, and so that comes back up while you're a youth minister, mm -hmm. while you're married, mm -hmm. you're trying to have one foot in each kingdom kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't work out. Yeah. I think that's, uh, so what was the, what was the big moment that blew it all up? Well, that moment didn't, that moment didn't come for another uh, two years. Mm -hmm. um, you're able to keep all this hidden from the church you're working with mm -mm. and everything. Well, for a while. Yeah, for a while uh, until she left. Okay. Um, um, yeah. So we, we were married, we were married three years and um, had to, had to work through, um, some decisions that she made to stay together. And then, uh, three years after that, uh, same scenario came up again and, uh, she wanted to leave instead, instead of working it out, working it out. And <clears throat> kind of on her way out the door, uh, you know, the, the preacher is at our house trying to, you know, help and kind of on her way out the door, she let him know about our lifestyle, you know, and I oh, can, okay. I can be upset about that all I want. But the fact of the matter is, is uh, it was the life. It was the lifestyle, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, there's, a, there's this running theme of, uh, of, uh, being unwilling to accept reality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. So yeah, that's uh, what it all boils down. That's what it boils down to. Yeah. And so uh, the uh, Rogersville uh, let me go uh, in October of fifteen. Okay. Uh, continued to pay me through the rest of the year. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and that says a lot about them. <laughs> uh, that kind of thing just that that will show up again later. Yeah. Uh, but. God's people, uh, man, uh, whenever God's people show up in a gracious manner, uh, it, it, when God's people show up in a gracious manner, um, you, a person has to go to incredible lengths, uh, to deny that that God is, is doing everything that we will allow him to do for us. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, I kind of stumbled around in North Alabama. Uh, there was a, a, a good friend, uh, there at the congregation that owned a construction company. He gave me a job. Okay. Um, I, I messed that up. Uh, I got, I went to work for Verizon selling cell phones. Uh, I messed that up. And when I, when I say I messed that up, I mean, due to my drinking and drugging, something happened at work for someone to either ask me to leave or for me to decide I gotta, I, I gotta change my environment again. Yeah. So, so a pattern of behavior, pattern all yep. related to it. Yep. 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 I'm not that bright, so I don't see patterns. Um, <laughs> I don't think that's true. You're just under the influence. It's right. Yeah. It's right. Uh, so by this time, it is 2018, and um, I have managed to, to take another hostage and um, get engaged. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Um, didn't do anything for a year. And everything kind of looked okay for uh -huh. a year. Uh -huh. And, you know, this little girl comes along and, you know, we're going to do great. Um, but uh, 
there's just they're just unresolved selfishness in there that yeah and um i think i think god did her a great service by removing me from her equation yeah you were not in a good place no and no, no no and so you asked originally uh what was the rock bottom thing yeah and honestly this is the thing uh that uh i wanted to ask kristen about beforehand yeah so uh whenever whenever my first wife left um the two incidences were um her seeking support somewhere else other than me yep <clears throat> and once we were divorced uh i mean i don't know how many times i said it but I, I i know that i told more than one person just like cheating is not in my dna yeah. you know i just i had never held hands with another girl while having a girlfriend you know I just, it's not in my dna um i was engaged to this girl and uh, i couldn't find a job anywhere so by this time uh, a guy that I had worked in the admissions office with at Freed was now the director of admissions at Freed. And I was like, hey, um, I need a job. Yeah. And he said, okay. And so I got, uh, I got Alabama, Mississippi, and everything west of the Mississippi River. Okay to recruit for Freed Hardeman. So I was on the road a ton, just gone, 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 gone. And while doing that, um, just the drinking and the smoking and the, just escalated. And uh, while doing that, uh, I did what I said I would never do, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and Eventually, uh, I got a DUI in the Freed Hardman vehicle uh, on a work trip, um, which is, that strikes one, two, and three. <laughs> yes. as, far, yes. as far as employment at Freed Hardman. Yes. Um, and then my buddy who gave me the job and his boss came down to Alabama and said, uh, we... Uh, we, uh, they had a meeting, them two and an, and an HR guy about how to save my job. Huh. I mean, that's just the uh, kind of people they were, kind of people they were. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, the, the president showed up at the universe or showed up at the meeting. Um, and I had spent a summer with him interning back whenever he was a, a preacher in Mount Juliet. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, he's just, he's so good. He is. We've had him on the podcast recently. <laughs> David Shannon would be yeah. that guy's name. Yeah. He, it's uh, okay to say it. He's an awesome guy. Yeah. He, he said, well, the rules say we can't keep him. He said, but they, they don't say that we can't help him. Yeah. And so... Um, they paid for me as long as I was willing uh, to go get help and they kept me on their insurance during my time of treatment. Um, you know, and, uh, the, so the, the rock bottom thing, um, was just, uh, I had done things that I never, ever thought were in my DNA. Yeah. Uh, but even in the midst of that, uh, people whose mission in life is to model Christ were just like, hey, man, we're here to help. That's you what out. they were doing. That's what they were they doing. They were modeling Christ. And so the the juxtaposition of of my depth and their height, uh, you know, if we're going to, 
Yeah. I just, I was like, this is, it's just time, Kevin. You know, it's. So that was your wake up call. Right. And it's funny, you said over there, whenever we were trying to fix the sound in the... <laughs> yeah, we had a little it, technical difficulty coming on. You yeah. said, you said, uh, well, let's try something different. Uh, uh, and I, that's so funny uh, because uh, if you show up at, <clears throat> if you show up at a treatment facility uh, worth its salt, you know, you're going to hear that 800 times. You know? Try something different. Yeah. How's that? How's the, the way you've been doing it? How's that working out? You know, <laughs> cause it wasn't working out. It wasn't right. working out. So yeah. you go to treatment and that sets you on the right path. Mm -hmm. And it uh, gave me a frank, gave me some tools to work with. It gave me tools, uh, examples, um, just, uh, whew, man, if you can, it, it, <clears throat> You know, you, you show up at treatment. This isn't this isn't church treatment or Church of Christ treatment. This is just treatment. This is just treatment, right? And you see guys in there uh, that that don't know the God that I know, mm -hmm. living a better life yeah. than I'm living. Yeah, that's an eye opener. It is. It is. Yeah, I can. I I realized. Uh, my hubris and arrogance and hypocrisy and um yeah i mean i just i i would have never i didn't tell people this but you know i knew a lot mm -hmm. i knew a lot and uh, whenever you check into this particular place uh you have a guide uh there are no professional counselors there or anything uh, you just have a bunch of guys there that have done this program before. Yeah. <clears throat> and my guide um, was the white haired guy, the oldest person there. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever you check in, uh, within the first like week or so, you're supposed to have a sit down with him and, you know, just, hey, what's up? Let's get to, you know, I'm going to be walking. Well, he didn't get around to me for like two weeks. Yeah. And it's a third. <clears throat> It's a 30 day program. So halfway through my time there, I have yet to sit down with my guide. Huh. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, one day I was like, Hey, Bob, when are, when are we going to, and he's like, my office, my office is right. You know where it's at, you know? Yeah. Uh, he was waiting on you. He was waiting on me again. Uh, I think pretty highly of myself and, you know, Bob's going to come get me whenever it's my time, mm -hmm. you know, and then he's, then Bob's going to listen to me and, <laughs> so I went and sat in his office and we did the whole, you know, how's that working out thing? You want to try something different? Right. Sure, sure, sure. And um, I tell him about, you know, ministry and church and God. And, and he was like, so you're you're on board with the, the whole God thing, right? You know, like, um, uh, you know, the whole coming to believe uh, there's a power greater than you. Like we're talking about the same God, right? That mm -hmm. power. I was like, oh, yeah, Bob, absolutely. He's like, why don't you act like it? Oh, that's one of those. <laughs> that's one of those exposing questions. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. I mean, talk, talk about just stripping it all down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's where it all kind of started to turn. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so talk about, you know, after treatment, getting out and what life looked like then, mm -hmm. which is now, mm -hmm. you know. <clears throat> um. I stayed, uh, I stayed with that program for, uh, 90 days, uh, and just in, in 30 day increments. Yep. That's, that's how that goes. Yep. Um, moved into a halfway house. Okay. Uh, and eventually started work. I was volunteering there and then eventually started working there and, um, in, in amongst all that, um, I knew, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think back for sure. Two people here at Walnut street. Um, I knew the Deweeses mm -hmm. and at the time they don't go here anymore. Uh, but I, I was in college, uh, with the McCords. Okay. And my halfway house is, was like three blocks away. Okay. And so started coming to Walnut street and, <clears throat> at the time, uh, the preacher, 
was talking, saying, in essence, the same things that I had been hearing for the last 90 days. Yeah. And while I was in treatment and while I'm going to these meetings in Nashville and hanging out in all these groups, everybody is saying the same thing in different terms. Sure. You know, there, there is a God in heaven. Um, God can probably run your life better than you can. And if you'll allow that to happen, life will start going a lot better than, uh, than it has been. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, that doesn't mean that there won't be hard, bad, wrong, awful, terrible days, uh, you know, in the midst of all that. Um, but if I don't try to stick my little grubby fingers in it and manipulate it so I can feel better in that moment, then God will handle it. If I'll, and the, Cliche is, you know, if I'll just focus on doing the, the next right thing. Um, and that's just, that's what I tried to do. Um, just be present, uh, transmit what I had been given. Mm -hmm. um, Bob, uh, my guy, I'd like to talk a lot about how if, uh, if you get this gift uh, and you try to hoard it to yourself and it will sour mm -hmm. uh, and you won't want it and neither will anybody else. Um, so whenever the opportunity presents itself to, to help another, you know, in that, in that setting, alcoholic, but in, yeah. in, in our, in the global setting, help another, um, uh, center, uh, someone who is yet to, to come to know Christ. Uh, if, if I hoard that, uh, then it'll sour and I won't want it and no one else yeah. will want it either. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, I had, um, it, it's just all the things that they talked about in treatment came true for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I had racked up a lot of debt. Um, uh, I had to ask, um, I had to ask, a you know, a buddy you know, a favor for me to have a job. Mm -hmm. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I drove a, a pickup truck that was, um, uh, it was just destroyed from, from my negligence over the years. Um, wow. And, um, I just, uh, by the grace of God, I keep saying I, but, uh, you know, this is none of these, none of the path that I'm walking, none of the path I'm walking is really what I want to be doing or where I want to be at. I just knew that uh, I had gotten myself where I had been. Yeah. And if none of these people were lying to me, then God can get me where it is, wherever it is I'm supposed to be. Sure. And, um, and he did. Um, I hate math. Um, I work at a bank. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, about a year after, about a year after I'd been out of treatment, uh, another guy in the community got a new vehicle and gave me gave me his old car. Wow. Uh, yep. And which was infinitely in better shape than the truck I had. Um, he did that because the same thing was done for him and the guy that gave it to him said, you know, when time comes, you know, you got to do the same thing. Yep. Um, <clears throat> uh, and then, um, when you, when you get out of treatment and life starts going better, uh, it, it usually goes in, in the following progression for most guys, uh, you get out and everything's new and you're alone. Uh, so, um, uh, you want to, you want a girlfriend, mm -hmm. you want a job so you can have some money, mm -hmm. uh, and, and you want a vehicle right? and a place to live eventually, not a halfway house, uh, would be awesome. Yeah. Um, 
And every time I tried to manipulate one of those situations, uh, it just fell apart. Yep. But almost instantaneously upon getting to the spot where, you know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, it'll, whatever's, whatever's going to come down the, the pike, will, it'll be there whenever, yeah. whenever God sees that, that I'm ready for a gift like that. And um, the greatest, greatest gift uh, that came down the pike was uh, my wife, Kristen, uh, who uh, couldn't, uh, as far as the wreckage uh, that I just did, mm -hmm. uh, she knows nothing about that kind of life. Mm hmm um, and why well, she told me this, uh, after we were engaged, but while we were dating, she kept having these, like, I don't know, I don't know. I yeah. Don't, do I want to get mixed yeah, up? Do I want to get mixed up? And she mm -hmm. just, she told me that she just prayed about it a ton and it just, she felt like the Holy Spirit was just saying, like, just hang in there, just hang in there, hang in there. And, uh, and she did. And, um, uh, little tiny infantile, uh, selfish Kev, uh, shows up daily still. Yep. And, um, she has done nothing but, um, she's done nothing but, but work on Kristen and her relationship with God and, uh, and as a byproduct, um, our marriage is awesome. Yeah. And, and since, since she, uh, works so passionately at that, um, uh, it, it makes me want to do the same thing. Yeah. Uh, and I think, I think she would say the same about me, but, um, you know, I'm real huge into self deprecation. So <laughs> <laughs> I would say that she does a better job than I do. Well, I think what's so amazing about this story is that a few things. Number one, the the thread of grace and mercy mm -hmm. by people that you would expect it from, mm -hmm. but you don't always get it from. Instead of writing you off, so many people, so many Christians mm -hmm. gave you another shot. Or if they had to maybe uh, take action uh, in letting you go, as you put it, or you know, firing you or whatever it was, they still sought to get you healthy and cut you loose. Mm -hmm. um, and then the theme of, of you always coming back around to your relationship with God, mm -hmm. that that was the center that you tried to avoid for so long, but then you came back around to that. And then I think the, the last thing is, is just how you continually had to say, I can't do this on my own. I can't do this on my own. Mm -hmm. As we wrap up here, tell me, if you could talk to anybody that is listening or tuning into the podcast that is in a similar situation that you were in, what what's the piece of advice that you would give them as far as getting help, getting back on track? Just take a take a big deep breath and ask yourself, how's it working out? Yeah, you know how. Where, where I am today yeah. is peace in any of my equation. And if it's, if it's not, uh, then you need to ask yourself, you know, what's, what is different from the way I have done things for however long? And can, can I, can I, is there anyone in my life where I want what they have. Yeah. And if I want what they have, then I should probably do what they did to get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How's that working out for you? Is what you said <laughs> yeah. a while ago. You've tried it your way. Yeah. Now try it God's way. And let's just see, right? You can compare the two and as you would testify to, it's mm -hmm. it's a much better way. And I and I want our our listeners and our our uh, viewers to know that if you are tuning in and you're in the Dixon area, or even if you're not, you can contact 
the Walnut Street Church of Christ, or you can email me at chris.mccurley at rippleoflight.com. We have a counseling center that we support here at uh, Walnut Street. It's called Walnut Street on Main. Your wife works as one of the counselors mm -hmm. there. It is fully staffed, and uh, they do a great job in helping with recovery, addiction, other issues as well. Mm -hmm. And so we want to offer that to you and let you know that that is an option. Or if you have a question about today's podcast, and I'm sure there will be some specifically for Kevin. We can make sure that he receives that email. Mm -hmm. We'll forward it on to him and he can uh, be, I'm sure you'd be willing to answer any questions somebody might have. That's chris.mccurley at rippleoflight.com. Thank you so much, Kevin, yes, for being Thank on you. here. Appreciate your vulnerability <laughs> and your willingness to share. And we're so excited that you're doing well. And we want to, we want you to know that if you're in a bad situation, we want to help you as much as we can. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Sincerely, Chris.